So to do a comparison, I thought I'd do a, a pros and cons comparison. So the pros of force plates and the pros of pressure mats. Force plates are generally a gold standard for measuring limb forces. They measure 3D forces. Um, they're very highly sensitive and accurate. As an example, if I have a dog laying on force plate that I use, um, if it's laying quietly, I will see a small fluctuation in force and that will be the dog's breathing. So it will measure the time, even as sensitive as measuring the tiny breaths, um, the tiny forces associated with breeding. Um, they can be embedded in the floor. This is a pro because you can cover them with the surface and you can disguise them more. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit later about the problems of getting animals to walk over things on the floor. Um, and they're very high frequency measurements as well. Um, they're up to, you know, 3000 um, frames per second, which is, is really, really high. Um, pressure mats um, do offer a continuous measurement surface for individual footfalls. So if you have two feet landing on the same force plate, you can't distinguish between those two feet. Um, on a pressure mat, because it's continuous, you will always see individual footfalls. Um, something that I really, really love about them is that they give you immediate visually intuitive data. Um, this is really, really useful in a clinical setting. If you have clients and you want to show them uh, what's going on, it's really useful for teaching and explaining to students to have that data immediately appear. Um, they're very easy to move and transport. They don't weigh very much um, and they give you foot pressure, which force plates obviously don't. Uh, they're generally also less costly than force plates. In contrast, there are always cons. And um, the biggest thing here is to choose the bit of equipment that meets your needs and that collects the data that you need to collect. Um, the cons of force plates are it is challenging to get individual footfalls, um, particularly with smaller individuals or at slow gates. If you have two feet landing in close proximity to one another, um, if one's foot still on the ground and another one then lands within the same force plate, you're not going to see those individual footfalls. Um, they're generally relatively immovable, they're heavy, they have to be bolted down, and they're very easily damaged as well. Uh, they're expensive, and the analysis interpretation is far less immediate, so there's generally quite a lot of analysis and computing to be done afterwards. Um, the cons of pressure mats, uh, you do only get vertical force instead of those three-dimensional forces. Um, there's actually a lot less understanding of foot pressure in animals, and that's something I'm going to talk about in a bit, is we have a really, really good understanding of what foot pressure should look like in people, but less so in animals. Um, they can be susceptible to drift. Um, sudden changes in temperature or suddenly moving them around, they do need to settle um, and they can drift if a continuous force is applied to them. Um, they generally have a lower recording frequency and a lower force accuracy than a force plate, but you weigh that up against how accurate you need to be and what frequency you need. Uh, the biggest part I'm gonna say, which is the last point, is that both are really affected by animal behavior. Um, and I'm gonna discuss that quite a lot later because um, animal behavior and the trial that you get is exactly what determines how good your data is. It doesn't matter how good your bit of equipment is if you can't get a good trial. So I'll be talking about that shortly. In terms of comparing within the research, there have been comparisons made between uh, pressure mats and force plates. Um, I've highlighted a couple of studies here and I've put those references on a slide at the end if you want to look them up. Um, Generally, the pressure mat seems to under measure on peak force, but it is consistent within itself. So if you were using this as a monitoring tool, which is what I'm going to suggest is the best use for it, it is consistent within itself. Um, the tests that have been carried out here within the paper, um, they weren't carried out completely perfectly. Um, they were actually comparing different footfalls um, from different trials. Um, what you could do is lay the pressure mat over the force plate so that they're measuring the same footfall to know if they were the same. Um, we're going to talk about between trial variation and between stance variation. And actually, there may be less of a difference between the two if you were to compare the exact same footfall. Um, the differences could easily also relate to things like recording frequency, environment or drift. Um, the important take home is the mat is consistent against itself. Um, it seems to be consistent in impulse and it just has a slight undermeasure on peak force, which in fairness could also be a filtering thing as well. 
Um, I'm going to recommend using uh, pressure mats to look at changes over a period of time, in which case the consistency within itself is what's important.